Now to a discussion of some of those broader issues of race, religion, and politics that have been in the air since last week. Jeffrey Brown has that conversation. And we take a look at some of the issues raised now with Bishop Harry Jackson, Jr., senior pastor of Hope Christian Church in Maryland. He's founder and chairman of the conservative High Impact Leadership Coalition and co-author of the book Personal Faith, Public Policy. The very Reverend Tracy Lind of Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in Cleveland. Melissa Harris Lacewell, professor of politics and African American studies at Princeton University and author of the book Barbershops, Bibles and BET, Everyday Thought and Black Political Thought. And Michael Cromerty, vice president of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, a Washington-based think tank. Well, Dean Lynn, I want to start with you and start with what we just heard about public attitudes a week after all the talk about uh, Reverend Wright and Barack Obama's response. Does it jibe, what, what you just heard, does it jibe with what, we've, what you've experienced in your church in the last week? I think it absolutely jibes. My congregation, which is a downtown diverse congregation <coughs> with Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, were very impressed with what Barack Obama had to say in his speech. They really appreciated his honesty and his forthrightness is speaking truth and love and is is coming coming true about his own story and talking about one of the most important issues in this country Bishop, as far as their feeling go ahead as far as their feelings about Reverend Wright I think my congregation while we wouldn't necessarily agree with everything he says and how he says it has a deep and abiding appreciation for the black church preaching tradition Bishop Jackson, what about in your church? What, what is the sense of, would you sense more understanding, more confusion, more anger about these things? What? No, I think many people believe that this is a problem that finally needs to be talked about, but we feel like the appropriate place to talk about it is within the church. Ironically, the statements from a pulpit have affected the nation, and although we appreciate Barack Obama's speech, it can't be solved by politics. I believe it's a heart issue, a sin issue, a moral issue. And, and Reverend Wright's uh, speech or, or sermons? Well, I think his sermons are incendiary and it, they represent an old school approach to uh, a common problem. I think we need a new civil rights movement. There's a growing dimension of integration that's happening in the church today. Churches like mine, a pastor church with 22 different nationalities in it, blacks, whites, Hispanics, predominantly African American. And I believe that there needs to be an aggressive decision by Bible-believing churches to end racism and to end desegregation, or I should say desegregate, uh, the churches in America, if I can say it right. Melissa Harris Lacewell, what, what's your answer to where we are a week later in terms of more confusion, more anger, more understanding, what? Well, I'd have to say that what I find most confusing is that I actually agree a great deal with what Bishop Jackson just said, and I'm often um, on, the, on the opposite side from him. So in this way, I see it um, as being very good. I agree with Bishop Jackson that although the gauntlet was laid down in this case by a political leader, by a candidate for the U.S. presidency, that the conversation about race and racial healing has really got to occur in civil society. And given that this emerged as a result of a flap about churches, why not start with religious institutions? How exciting would it be if right now today churches that are predominantly African-American would make a phone call to the church across uh, town that's predominantly white, if the Jewish synagogue would make a call to the you know, Baptist uh, church and say, well, maybe we're not going to worship together, but how about we get together on Saturday afternoon and build a house with Habitat for Humanity together? What if we find some common ground on which we could have a vocabulary in which we could talk to each other, find some common agreements? I agree with the bishop that there has been some movement towards interracial worship, but overall we remain an incredibly divided racially uh, and spiritually uh, nation. And so it's time for spiritual leaders to start talking about how to close that divide. Okay, and Michael Cromerty, your reaction a week later, where are we? Well, I think it's very important that we're having this conversation and uh, it's very important that uh, Senator Obama uh, made that speech. Uh, the problem, however, with having uh, a com civil conversation about this is that Reverend Wright is in the background. Uh, Reverend Wright is a man who is very much a political extremist. He's friends with Louis Farrakhan. He brags about that. He believes deeply in uh, 
wacky conspiracy theories. And so it's going to be difficult to have a conversation about race and injustice in America when you have in the background someone like Reverend Wright, who Senator Obama sat under for 20 years and has given a significant amount of money to. I think that's actually going to hurt the conversation. Does it, does it play into the public, public attitudes? We were just listening to Andy Kohut's numbers. Do you sense it coming out in those polls or not yet? Well, attitudes it, about Reverend Wright, I mean. Uh, uh, Andy Kohut said that it's going to be a potential problem for Senator Obama. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be more than a potential problem for Senator Obama. This issue is not going to go away. Oh, you hear more and more about it, and especially in light of the more things that we're learning about Reverend Wright's comments about various ethnic groups, about conspiracy theories, about the U.S. government. Uh, he accuses the U.S. government of uh, have started the AIDS crisis in America. I mean, these conspiracy theories would not be tolerated if the candidate we're talking about uh, was, say, President Bush in the year 2000. If we found out that President Bush was in a church like that, for 20 years, uh, I think the conversation would not end, and it's not going to end on this one. Dean Lind, uh, respond to that. You come from a progressive ministry uh, tradition. Uh, w w is there a context in which we should think about Reverend Wright and, and, and his language and rhetoric? Yeah, I think we need to consider Reverend Wright in the context of the historic black preaching tradition and in the historic tradition of the prophets, the biblical prophets. Amos, Isaiah, Jeremiah used harsh language. And furthermore, I don't think we can suggest that a presidential candidate or any other person agrees with everything that their minister says. Moreover, I think we've got to be careful about taking Reverend Wright's comments out of context. Bishop Jackson? Well, I don't like his comments in our book, Personal Faith, Public Policy. We talk about one of the issues we can solve as a people of faith the language that Reverend Wright uses will not bring people together. This is a unique opportunity we have to heal the racial divide. So I don't want to let us off the hook. But let, but let me ask you uh, to help people understand, is, mm -hmm. is that um, liberation theology tradition, black liberation theology, mm -hmm. is that part of a mainstream tradition? How should we think about it? Well, there's a debate over that. Uh, the liberation theology actually originated in 1967 by a Roman Catholic priest, but I think it ties into more of a black uh, nationalistic kind of spirit uh, that has been prevalent in the black community for years. And uh, I believe that there needs to be this healing tone. I honor uh, the fact that Reverend Wright has done great work in his community, but what I don't believe that in this particular generation, that we need to dig up old wounds. And I think there needs to be some healing that goes on behind closed doors. The church needs to talk with itself. And the sin, if you will, in this situation is not Barack Obama's. And in fact, it's not even uh, Jeremiah Wright's. The greater sin is that the church has not addressed this problem. And the American church has let this thing fester for far too many years. We need to heal ourselves. Professor 